What's going on everybody? Welcome back to The Heavy Wrench. Thanks for tuning in today. I appreciate it. If this is your first video of mine you're watching, check out some other ones. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. It's down there. Um, throw a comment out there. This is uh, I'm trying to keep this channel going. Uh, to this week I'm in training all week. Uh, actually I'm in a hotel as you can probably tell. But I want to talk to you guys about some things. Uh, it's, it's kind of a buzz topic right now. We're all dealing with it, and it's somewhat confusing of why, and I, I kind of hope I'm going to throw a little bit of the why out there for you. So I want to talk about emissions. Emissions is not that scary, okay? It's something that we're going to have to deal with. It's not going anywhere, okay? And I want to be the first to tell you that I am seriously into performance things. You know, I have, I go to tractor pulls, truck pulls. Um, I like seeing the racing trucks, uh, the trucks, the drag racing diesels that go down the down the road. I love performance things. I love seeing power, and I love seeing machines push to their absolute maximum capabilities. So, throwing that out there, any type of performance thing, I like seeing it. But the reality is, it's not something that we can deal with on a day-to-day -day basis at work. We're not in a performance. We're in a longevity. Okay, so. That being said, what I want to talk to you today about is we're, we're in a final tier four and we're, we've kind of got a pretty good handle on this now. As far as construction industry goes, we kind of got brought in at the tail end of everything. Um, automotive had to lead the way and heavy truck had to follow suit and we we're the next one in line. So now we're into final tier four and kind of appreciate those automotive guys and those heavy truck guys that got into it a little bit before we did as far as heavy heavy construction guys and they kind of led the way and so they had some stumble blocks that we really didn't have to see so if you're a young guy looking to get into it don't be scared of emissions it's nothing to be scared about okay they're just canisters and sensors and a fluid and some injectors and a whole lot of magic, if you want to call it that, but not really. So the first thing I guess we got to get a baseline out as we have the triangle, okay? The combustion triangle, I guess, if you want to call it that. Um, it's kind of the way I like to look at it. So you have air, fuel, and heat. Them are the components that we need to fire the engine. So that being said, we have a byproduct of that. And I'm only going to talk about the emissions byproduct right now because that's really all we're going to need to know about for right now. So you have what's your byproducts of that engine. So the engine has particulate matter or soot and NOx. Okay. Now we can get all into the science of everything if you want to. That's fine. Uh, but for for every for all intents and purposes, let's just keep it to those two uh two things. So we have NOx. Well, first we want to start lowering NOx and lowering particulate matter. So how do we do that? Well, we can control that by controlling our heat and our fuel, right? So how do we control heat? Well, we're trying to pulse the injectors and get a little pre-combustion, pre post-combustion. We're trying to make sure that fuel burns 100% efficient. Well, when it burns 100% efficient, we don't have the particulate matter. But what we do have is a lot more NOx. So if you want to look at it like a teeter-totter, you have NOx and particulate matter, okay? If you lower the particulate matter, you raise the NOx. If you lower the NOx, you raise the particulate matter. So with EGR, we are trying to lower the NOx. So we're raising the particulate matter. So we had, I guess we'll go back to... Uh, IT4. Okay. IT4, what do we do? We just tried to lower that NOx and let the particulate matter go up a little bit. And that's why we had a diesel particulate filter. So that diesel particulate filter caught all that particulate matter and held it in place. So then what do we do? Okay. We have to do a regen, which we can turn particulate matter into ash if we get it hot enough. So what we did is we let that, let that baby build heat, and it took all that particulate matter and turned it into ash. 
So now we have ash. Well, when that filter gets full, we had to clean it, okay? So now that lowered our NOx, our particulate matter, we stopped getting out of the tailpipe, but we just kind of caught it. So now we're into final tier four. Now final tier four, what do we do? We're gonna lower that particulate matter because we had a hard time controlling how much we were getting because our NOx levels, when we brought that down, we brought the particulate matter up. Okay, so now we wanna bring the NOx levels down and the particulate matter down. So we've got to do both. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to throw a little less EGR at it, keep them combustion temperatures high, because when we throw EGR, we're actually cooling combustion temperatures because we don't have the air volume that we would of just running good clean air from our charge air coolers and everything else, our turbo. So what are we going to do with that NOx? Well, what they figured out is DEF. Def is not the scary thing that everybody thinks it is, okay? It is literally just 32.5% urea, okay? So now we take that def, and we have some precious metals in a canister that are sitting there waiting for something to happen. We're blowing our exhaust at it. We inject the def, and the def turns into ammonia, okay? Pretty simple, pretty simple deal. It turns into water vapor and ammonia because that urea turns into ammonia, okay? And the water that's carrying it, the rest of DEF is actually water. So that water turns into what? Water vapor at a high heat because we have hot exhaust because our engine is burning efficiently. So now we're gonna lower that NOx. How do we do that? Well, it actually takes that NOx and takes the nitrogen out of it and separates it away and now we have nitrogen so we're chemically changing that nox back into nitrogen okay and water vapor so that's what's actually going to come out of our scr okay now that's a term maybe it's the first time you're hearing it but selective catalyst reduction is really what it is but all we need to know right now is that it's just precious metals that converts the ammonia that DEF is coming up that comes off of DEF into a chemical that will fight the NOx. Okay, so now we're fighting NOx on that level. So we can run our engines a little bit more efficient, which means we have less particulate matter and more NOx. But at the end of it, we're regulating this amount of DEF that we're putting in to control the NOx and split it apart. And we actually have sensors that are on the inlet and outlet of that SCR. So we know how much NOx we're producing, the ECM does, because these ECMs are getting more and more complicated every day, okay? They are programming these and they are making these engines run super efficient and almost to the point where they're creating way more NOx than particulate matter, which is great. Now we have what they have as a passive regen. Okay, so while it's doing it passively, you don't even notice it. You can just keep driving. You don't have to stop and park your machine. You don't have to stop and park your truck. It happens while you're driving. They're just raising them combustion temperatures up, getting it super hot so it can burn that soot, or particulate matter, soot, whatever you want to call it, down into ash. But now it's lasting longer. Why? Because we're creating less particulate matter because our engines are running more efficiently. Now by efficiently, I mean we have to keep them engines working. Okay, so the best thing you can do for any engine that has emissions or best advice you can give an operator is keep that machine working hard. Okay, that's gonna help us out keeping those combustion temperatures up to our particulate matters down and they'll see less passive regions. So these are kind of my thoughts on emissions and I wanted to get something out to you guys and guys and gals, whoever's watching this video. Uh, but anyway, those are my thoughts on emissions, why you shouldn't be scared of it. I do plan on doing some more videos on emissions and the components that are related to emissions and kind of more how it works. But this is kind of like the throw it out there, throw some spaghetti on the wall, see what sticks and see if it, you know, kind of makes more sense to some people. If it does, let me know in the comments. Let me know if uh, what you guys think or gals think, whatever. I want to know what everybody thinks. 
about what I'm doing here. And I'm going to try to dive into each component of it and try to lay out there a baseline of what they all do. And maybe you can put them all together. Uh, the company I work for does a great job training us and it really does uh, help out when you get a good understanding of it and spreading this word might help you out. It might be something already, you already know, might be just some overview for you to keep that fresh in your mind because we are battling it every day. And if we don't keep these engines running at their peak performance, we're really going to start building more particulate matter and we're going to see more of these passive regions. So we want to keep that particulate matter down. It'll have a lot less uh, EGR to fight uh, because we're giving it less. We'll keep them, keep that teeter totter going and that triangle burning right. And that's what the ECM is going to do for us. And as long as we give it some good feedback from the operator, it's really going to help us out. So don't let them idle and hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, check out at the heavy wrench on Instagram. And I appreciate your time and keep that iron moving.